The turn of the 20th century brought perilous times to BYU. Facing threats from without and within, our fledgling university sought a leader of perseverance and courage. We found that leader in President George H. Brimhall. George began his educational career at age 18 when he entered high school in Provo under Principal Warren Dusenberry. George wrote of the experience. Walked on Monday morning 12 miles to school, did janitorial work for my tuition, and at the close of my course gave the valedictory address with considerable vehemence, I presume, as for the first time I was applauded, although my pants were patched. George's talent for public speaking would grow, as would his skills in education. In 1890, he returned to the Duesenberry School as a faculty member. By this time, the school had become Brigham Young Academy. George's salary was just $20 a month, but the job allowed him to work toward graduation. He received his Bachelor of Pedagogy degree at the age of 40 at the Academy's first college commencement. In the meantime, he had also become an assistant principal under President Benjamin Clough and one of the school's most powerful and popular lecturers. Once, during a rash of campus theft, he addressed an overflowing assembly hall, focusing his remarks on a student's stolen watch. And let me suggest that if the culprit has even so much as a trace of conscience and character, every tick of that watch would say to him, thief, thief, thief. He also suggested that the guilty party might want to return the watch to his desk. When he checked there the next morning, he found a wide variety. Although he didn't know it, Brimhall's responsibilities were about to expand exponentially. President Clough would soon begin an extended leave of absence, and in 1900, Brimhall would be left in charge. Times were hard and funds were scarce. At the academy, which offered high school as well as college curriculum, many felt the college program was too great a drain on church resources and should be eliminated entirely. Finally, in 1901, church president Lorenzo Snow gathered the primary stakeholders for a special meeting to decide the issue. Emotions ran high. President Kingsbury of the University of Utah pressed hard for the church to abandon all collegiate education and leave it to the state schools. Others echoed his feelings. Then Brimhall stood to speak. With quiet power, he argued for an alternate college program that would also reinforce the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his journal, at the end of the day, Brimhall wrote tersely, meeting of the Board of Education, big discussion, saved the college department of BYA. University tried to cut it out of existence. Though the entry was brief, its ramifications were huge. On June 25, 1901, George Brimhall had effectively rescued the Academy's college program from oblivion. Soon afterward, the Academy became the official college of the church, and a year after President Clough's return, the school officially became Brigham Young University. By this time, George Brimhall was no longer at BYU. The pressures of heading the school while maintaining a heavy class load had caused his health to fail. Finally, too weak even to get out of bed unassisted, Brimhall had left the state to recuperate. But he wouldn't stay away for long. In 1903, Benjamin Clough made an abrupt career change, leaving BYU without an administrator. So, in spite of his frail condition, George Brimhall was called back to Provo, this time as university president. As months passed, Brimhall's health improved, and so did the quality of education at BYU. He expanded curriculum to include 15 departments. He submitted plans for a new college hall, and he worked to attract the best faculty possible, luring talent from Harvard, Cornell, and the University of Chicago. The prestige of the university was on the upswing, but President Brimhall was about to face the most difficult challenge of his career. Little by little, a new wave of intellectualism was spreading across campus. Eventually, like many of their contemporaries, BYU's new faculty members began suggesting that religion was outdated, even naive and superstitious. By the end of the decade, reports began to circulate that some students were losing their faith. Even so, these professors were esteemed by their colleagues and had garnered a huge following among students. Fighting a growing tide of resistance, Brimhall finally convened a meeting with the professors, administrators, and six members of the Quorum of the Twelve. As a result, three of the professors left the university. 
Brimhall had stood firm and alone against enormous opposition. Some declared he had destroyed the school, yet his decision became a defining event in BYU history. He had insisted on fostering an environment in which learning could take place both by study and by faith. Finally, in 1921, George Brimhall left the presidency to head BYU's Department of Religious Education. For years, his valiant leadership had protected a small-town academy, guiding it toward its destiny as one of the largest private universities in America. And his courage, under the fire of adversity, charted a course for BYU education that still endures today. <laughs>